Okay, so in this video, we're going to go through a breakdown of uh, this beach cliff updated. Uh, this is one of the more requested things that I've been asked to update and renew based on the fact that uh, a number of things have changed in Gaia. So a lot of the nodes have different values. Some of them even have different names. And along with those, they also have different values. Um, there's also a bunch of new nodes that didn't exist before that uh, have new features and new things that you can do. Uh, processes that I may have, you know, um, created multiple nodes and now they're combined into a single node for function. So it was time to go ahead and revisit this, especially since you know, kept on getting requests to update it. So um, we're going to start off at the beginning here. Uh, essentially, what I did in order to create this is a, a multi-path kind of idea. Um, anytime you're dealing with something chaotic, uh, it's a good idea to sort of work out what are the main ingredients? What are the things that you really need in order to put this together? And what is the best way to build those ingredients and then work out ways to combine them? So if we uh, take a look at the beginning, um, I have myself a gradient here. And in order to chop the gradient, I just opened up the section here and went ahead and did a little clip and uh, on the top and the bottom. So just turning on your clip function and just chop the top and the bottom. Then with an auto level, I did this. And I suppose with Within the uh, the clipping function, I could have probably adjusted, you know, how much I took off the bottom, how much I took off the top, to get the uh, the result that I'm about to get with the transform. But um, it was just faster and simpler in my brain just to immediately go to the transform and just push it in a direction. It should be fine, uh, just because I wanted more of the base here. So that's what I ended up doing. Um, but yeah, there's there's multiple ways of doing this. So um, that gets me this base. Uh, another element for the base that I wanted was this chunkiness here. So this chunkiness was achieved by two different Voronoi. I have a uh, tiny Voronoi. So I went in, I set dual, so I got lots of them. Um, I'm not sure if I changed the scale, but I did change the scale down here. So in the advanced settings. And of course, I set them to S-type. S-type I always use for any kind of rocky forms that has lots of sharp edges, simply because the S-type has sharpness at the base as well as the peak. If we look at the other Voronoi, it is also an S-type, and there also is an adjustment here, but this scale was modified. And you can see that it's not grayed out, so yes, it definitely was changed. I'm also adjusting the warp um, in both cases so that they're not you know, all swirly. So just combining them together, 50-50, um, no big change here. It's just a straight up blend. And that gave me that. Um, if we combine the two of them together, um, I'm using subtract here. So that meant with a very flat base, but lots of breakup along the top. Whereas if I added as, um, I've done it as an add, I'd have a lot at the base and it's still in the middle and then nothing at the top. So um, I'm going to fill this base in anyways. So I really wanted the detail along the cliff. That's sort of the, sort of the first pass of chaoticness. That's the word. It is one. I just made it up. There we go. Um, so we also have more chunky stuff that we're going to be combining with this cliff. So I have um, plates and Voronoi that I've done here. And I've left all the warping and um, brought them together, just a regular 50% blend as well, and threw that into the cliff. Now, it's not actually going to be used for the cliff. It's going to be used as the basis for the ground, but I built it there. So let's go back down to this main track. So from the main track, we're going to branch off, and we're going to start building cells. So the cells set to max. What it's going to do is it's going to add stuff, but it's not going to take away anything, whereas the cells would just break apart everything. I just wanted it to kind of add some chunkiness to the surface. And I'm doing a similar thing here, also set to max, but a different scale. So just two different scales. For this one, I'm displacing it. 
can see it's set to rugged and a little bit of strength just to break it up. And then I combine it with the other cells. And these are also set to max for the combination. And so it just adds a little something more, right? It's a smaller breakup, and it's a bigger breakup. Now, with these, again, we're going in multiple directions. So if I take this cells, I'm going over here and combine it with the other one, but I'm also taking that and I'm branching it to uh, this broken up section. And so combining them there, again, a 50-50 blend, we get some raised sections that are not so sharp, right? Uh, straight up and down is never good. So you'll notice that in a lot of what I'm doing in the rest of this build is trying to get rid of uh, straight up and down information because it never looks good in a height map system. You can take this as is even from here um, and take this into ZBrush and then sculpt the heck out of it and then you know redo the UVs and it would probably make a really nice rocky cliff but you have to do that extra step. So if you want to stay in Gaia, you only want to work with the same software. You have to get a bit more creative and look for ways that you can sort of slice things off and give them more angles as opposed to a perfect sort of 90 degree rigid shape. So one of the ways that I'm doing that is here. And um, a, another process is taking the combined one and using a recurve which is smoothing some of this stuff out and getting rid of some of the, the straight up and down, just giving more texture to these regions. And then taking those and then combining them together. I get stuff that, you know, it has a little bit of sharpness, it has a little bit of smoothness. It's a nice blend. So it's over here, another way to, you know, uh, break this rigidness is just to combine it back with itself, its, its earlier form. And so we, if we do that, we get a nice little angle there. And I adjusted the amount. It's a little bit of slope. It's not quite a lot, but at least it's something. And when it starts to combine with other elements, it will be much better. So um, I'm going to take this and I'm going to look at another way of also breaking it apart. So we've taken this and we've done a recurve to it. We've taken it and we've combined it with that slant. And we're also going to take this and something similar to recurve, it's called apex. Now apex, you can set it to slant mode and then adjust your settings. And what it does is it comes in and it finds, you know, a top and a base, and then it does a angular slice. And then it does another angular slice from the other way. And you can control how that works. And so that's given me some other slants. So when combined with this, you get this. So it's kind of like a uh, Voronoi that's setting up and it's a, an interesting, very sharp, jagged shape without being too straight up and down. There's still some, but not as much. So taking that and then saying, you know what, let's go ahead and blend that with this one and see what we get. And that smooths out some of the uh, extreme areas. So it gives us more texture, maintains the forms. Because these are all iterations built off the same thing, when we start to blend them in, they all start to look the same um, in terms of like where the peaks are and where the valleys are. Uh, so you're not changing too much of the form. And you can always go back and you'll get a very similar result just by going in and then changing the cells. So if you just change the cells, you'll get the same structure, but with a different kind of breakup. And you can also change the scale of them, the big versus the small and all that will change as well. Okay, so that's exploring this kind of chain here. Now, if we take this one and let's start to uh, break it up in a different way, we do a shatter, which um, is basically a really stark erosion. And there's also some, I believe some displacement in there. Um, it just really, heavily breaks things up. It's it's a stronger erosion than erosion usually is. And then we just do an, a recurve to that. We're getting interesting, almost like a sandstone kind of look uh, to this. 
Um, you can see these in deserts, similar kind of forms. And so that's some I, an additional shape that I want to add to this. Problem is, if I go ahead and just kind of cross blend, it's just going to soften everything. And really, what I want is the result of this. Um, you know how this has been deformed compared to this. So that's what I do. If you follow the branch out here and up, you'll see it plugged into the top here. Taking that recurve and then just doing a difference on it at 100%. So I just want to have, you know, what turns this into this? What would the shapes be? And that's these shapes. Now, there's some extreme stuff in the back, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. So it doesn't really look like much um, here. But when we take this and then add to it, we can see the end result. So just adds more peaks and valleys, makes it feel a little bit more chaotic, a little bit nicer. Okay, so for historical sense, um, I did use a fold in the previous one. So I figured, okay, well, well let's just see. We'll add a fold in. What's that going to produce? And we've got stuff that's, um, again, it's displacement as well as something very similar to what the Apex is doing. So this is a multi node. It's got lots of things in it that are doing things kind of behind the scenes. And that's essentially what it's doing. It's just a, a major displacement and what the apex is doing. So when we take this and combine it with that as max, and then I just um, played with the value. So I went back and forth. I ended up at a 53. So 50 probably would have been fine. But I just wanted to explore it and you know try stuff out. And what I was happy with in regards to this, despite the fact that I added a bunch of you know um, uh, gouges and whatnot, is that it's mainly showing up in certain areas that creating some uh, smoother regions versus some chaotic re regions. And uh, when you want to balance something out, you want big, medium, and small shapes. So the big smooths give you know a point of relaxation, then we've got some medium shapes, and then we've got some small shapes at the base here. So there we are. We've got all of this stuff, and now it needs a floor, because it still doesn't have a floor. And that's what we were doing up here. We were building ourselves a nice little floor and with a nice little recurve, we get sort of like the big sandy region. So we'll take that and blunk. I'm going to got some big sand and we could stop there. We could, we could, you know, say that's good enough. That's, that's what I want, but we don't. Um, I went ahead and did a height mask here. Just kind of excluding the top, playing with the fall off, max and min. And uh, I've got a worse lens here. And this is going to add in some chunky bits to the ground. So we still got some of the sand behind, but got some chunky bits. And that's getting me there. And then of course, I want the flow of the sand coming down. So the natural thing to do that with now is snow. And with snow, I just started to drop to floor because there's, there's like, um, when I changed between them, it was dropping as it was, uh, it was shifting. And so I thought, okay, well, you know what? I'm just gonna, gonna do a drop to floor and see what happens. Um, I don't know why it was shifting before, but there we go. And this is uh, leading to like my final result. So it's giving me something good because again, like I've done in other videos, uh, I turn off the real scale and then I start tweaking it myself until I get some forms that look pretty cool. There are some, you know, uh, areas that I'm not happy with, like this ridge right here. It's creating some streaking and there's a few other areas where that happens. Uh, those are things that once again, depending on how you're using this, uh, there's ways to hide it, um, and there's things that you can do to uh, eliminate it later on. Uh, you could go into Photoshop and you know tweak that if you don't have or any other image editing program, Creative for that matter. 
uh, to go ahead and uh, eliminate that a little bit. Uh, or you can use, you know, alternate sculpting software or um, if you're going to be converting this into a mesh. There's lots of uh, solutions there. So um, I also wanted to explore um, just the general areas where sand would fall. So just kind of like an advanced sort of flow generation using this. And I'm using this as a way to mask a slope node. The slope node is going to then uh, add little highlights to the tops of them. So as you see right here, uh, some of those have been picked up, but not all of them. And so it's just going to add a few more of those in in order to help kind of flesh out a little bit further. So I do take that and explore it um, a little bit further by blending it with the original. See the result there, and you see how it shifts. It shouldn't shift, but some somehow it does, um, and that adds a little bit more. And then um, I do make use of it, but I'm doing a quick blur on it here to assist me with another function. So this branch from here go that one goes to masking and it goes off into texturing, but also branches back into what I'm doing for the floor. When you add a snow node, you lose a lot of detail. So one of the first things that I'm doing here is the erosion. And the erosion I'm masking off with a painted mask. Painted mask, we just increase the blur factor, but it's mainly just painting across this region here and then adjusting it until you get what you like. So this took multiple iterations. I was playing with it. I'd erase a little bit. I'd add a little bit kind of back and forth until I got a balance that was OK. Still not 100% happy with it, but it's there. And the reason that I'm doing this is because the main erosion just does too much. right? And it's even gone in and done some big carving in here and over there. And I really just don't need that much. Um, you could keep some of this. Uh, there's been multiple times where I've taken something like this and I've blended it uh, back into the uh, the cliff itself. Uh, and what it does is it just looks like it's flowing out of the actual cliff. So to just to show you what that would look like. And we set that to uh, max. Right. And so you can do something like that. Um, and you get the, uh, the stark areas and sand kind of flowing in. But it is a little extreme, whereas the, uh, the snow feels a bit more natural, right, in terms of the piles. So I didn't want that. I, what I wanted was a uh, more subtle approach to kind of breaking up the snow. And so I went ahead and I grabbed the wear, and that's what I needed the mask for, so that it wouldn't do. I've only got one here, but there was another one. You can start to see it there that was all branchy and weird, and I just didn't want that there. Um, I was also eating away at the sharpness of the peaks quite a lot, so I also wanted to get rid of that. So with all that there, um, I have this recurve node. Can you guess where this came from? All the way back at the beginning. So coming from this guy over here, the smaller lower branch, we're taking that, we're doing a recurve, and we're taking it and adding it to just that region. And that's what this blurred mask is for, is to ensure that the ripples that I'm generating from this recurve are only blended back in to where the snow is. Okay, so moving on, uh, we've got uh, our blur and our original mask. And what this is doing is it's just softening some of the edges. You don't have to do this. You can just go straight forward with it. Um, I'm adding the slope sharpness because that's one of the things that got heavily broken down when it was blurred. Those completely disappeared. So I'm just adding them back in. Um, and then from there, what we've got is a clutter. 
and the clutter is giving me the two different colors, the color of the stone and the color of the sand that are kind of uh, blending nicely together and they sort of transition um, a little bit softly, which gives you sort of like the uh, idea of like maybe a little bit of a powdered sand. You could probably sharpen it a little bit further as you got further up, but um, down around the base it's good. Um, I'm also taking this mask and I'm inverting it because I'm going to use that to uh, blend in the other feature, which is an occlusion of the entire thing and a soil. And those have just been blended 50-50 so that we get half of the soil and half the occlusion. So the soil has been set to graded. This gives us this. And I could, of course, go for like a sat maps on this and get, you know, different kind of details. But I decided to take this and just go ahead and subtract it from the actual color. So I take the color and then subtract the occlusion as soil. And I got that. And it looked pretty good. That's where I ended it. So, of course, additional texturing and something like substance or um, a mixer or something like that could probably add even more interesting details, maybe bring in some additional realism. But really what we're doing here is building a really strong base that we can work with. So hopefully this gave you some general insight. I'm just going to go back over and check a couple of nodes. Um, sometimes it's good to check to see you know, if I poked and prodded with some of these things. You can look down the link below. And keep in mind that you can always go back through the video. You can pause at any point in time and just kind of copy down all of the settings that I have here. Some things, um, when I'm running into weird issues, I went in leveled, uh, uh, clamp and clip, drop to floor. Um, these were, I was experiencing some kind of weird issue at that point. So these are not absolutely necessary for you to do, but um, I, uh, I put them in just in case. Um, the thing that I was experiencing was related to it. And really, uh, it didn't seem to be, so um, that's it. What else we got over here? Um, I think the main thing where I'm using that is my influence, so they're not too tall uh, for the war noise, right? Make them short. Otherwise, um, you can see nothing's been highlighted in a lot of these. So, I believe that's it. I believe I covered everything that I did in here. A lot of times it's hard to keep track of, you know, everything that's been done. It's not a super complex um, setup. You know, this is all the initial shape with the final part of the shape coming in here for the base or um, the sand element, as it were. And then the rest of this over here is the texture. So hopefully you found something interesting. You got the update of uh, this lovely beach cliff and uh, go explore. See you in the next video.